Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another episode of Testing in Nutshell. This is Nish Kumar Singh and we are talking about Load Runner tutorials. As a part of today's tutorial, we are getting and stepping into the settings part and getting started with the runtime settings in order to understand some of the replay options which you can apply as a part of your execution of the script. The number one thing what we'll be talking about is of course the quick review on the run logic which we have covered in our previous tutorials as well. So give you an overview of run logic, what you can actually do. Second thing we'll be talking about the pacing that how what exactly pacing is all about and how that applies to a script with a practical execution. Similarly, we will be understanding what exactly is a log and how to add extended logs to your replay options when replaying a particular script. And last but not the least, we are also going to cover about think time, which is very common for a lot of people to understand when we talk about replaying a think time with different percentages on the recorded one. So let's get started quickly and understand the same that what exactly these runtime settings are in BUGen. As a part of this tutorial, we will be understanding what are runtime settings and specific settings of the runtime including pacing, log and think time. To get started, all we need to have a wonderful script which you can make use of in order to see these settings happening and also if you don't do that, that should be fine because these are some of the very self-explanatory options of the runtime settings. If you remember our previous tutorial when we were talking about iterating a particular test, we have understood about the runtime settings a little bit, where we just used one of the options called as run logic. In order to access the run settings, that is runtime settings, you can actually use your solution explorer to access to the runtime settings for a particular script or also go to the replay menu and at the bottom you would find runtime settings with the shortcut of pressing F4. Now the runtime settings are exclusively associated with the execution of the script. As it says, run time settings. That means whenever you want to replay a particular script or run a particular script, the runtime settings will be applied to that. Otherwise, you have different settings available for different work. For example, we do have recording settings or recording options for recording a particular script and replay. We have runtime settings and for the entire tool, we have tool options. So settings are different and we have various types of settings available. So you should be well aware of which settings should you go for in order to make changes to your script. Now, we are talking about the runtime settings, which can be double clicked on the solution explorer to get the tab. Now if you look at the tab, it has some general basic settings where we are talking about today. And following that, we do have some of the important things or more different options which will be important and necessary to design a test particularly in more detail. Don't forget, we are talking about testing in nutshell, so we will keep some of the art tutorials specific to the key areas which are quite often used and very common for any individual to know. The other options, you can explore it beyond after learning these basics. To get started, of course, the run logic we have covered in our previous tutorials. You can watch that on the card and have a look on this. So here we can basically define the number of iterations. You can insert a new action, insert a block, which you see here. For example, the first one is block here, and then we have the action name. So you can insert a block, you can insert an action under a particular block, you can remove it, move up and down, and you can define it. Now, you can also define the iterations to be executed for the particular test. So right now we have set it for the number of iteration as three. So by default, this iteration will run for three times, which we data derived in the previous tutorials. The next important option, which we'll be covering today is called as pacing. The pacing is an option which basically determines that how much difference we should have in order to run between the iterations. For example, if I'm running three different iterations of a particular script, then I can define the gap between the two iterations. For example, the iteration one ends and then how long should it wait to run the second iteration is what we call it as pacing. So the time lag or gap between the execution of iterations of a script is called as pacing. Now here we have three different options that is start a new iteration as soon as the previous iteration ends, which basically determines that as soon as the third iteration ends, the second iteration will continue. And once the second iteration ends, the third iteration will continue immediately at the completion. But we do have other options to control it, like start new iteration after the previous iteration ends with a fixed delay of 60 seconds or a random delay of between 60 to 90. 
Now these are the text fields which you can actually modify and you can define your own range of values in terms of seconds. In the unit seconds, you can define the number of seconds here which you want to give if in case random. But if you say fixed, then every single iteration will wait for 60 seconds in order to run the next iteration. The third option here is start new iteration at a fixed interval every 60 seconds. Now what's the difference between option 2 and option 3? Here we say fixed delay. That means no matter how long your first iteration takes, the moment the first iteration completes, it will wait for 60 seconds before the second iteration can begin. But in the third option, we do say fixed interval. That means I have defined the interval. Now suppose the initial one takes around 30 seconds to complete, then let the 60 seconds get over and then only the second iteration will start. Now it will not wait for the previous iteration to end and then count the 60 seconds to start the next iteration. Now that's the major difference between the delay and the interval. Delay will exhaust the time no matter when your first iteration completes, then it will count the 60 seconds and run the next iteration. Whereas the third option will just wait if the uh, time gets up, it will start the next one. In case the first one takes more than 60 seconds, then it will wait for that to end and immediately start after that. So you can make use of all these settings to simulate the real time scenarios of the users. Let's try with using the second option here in our scenario and see that does it wait for the fixed 60 seconds but let me just reduce it or else it will go with the uh, 30 seconds uh, to increase the time of the tutorial. So let's set it up on the start uh, new iteration after the previous iteration ends with fixed delay of 30 seconds and then run it. So before that make sure there is an asterisk so you have to save it to make these changes take effect and then click on run. So we have three iterations as you know. We are just running that right now. And here you can also focus on the test data, which you can find here in the execution. So right now we are executing the iteration number one. You can see here with Denver and Paris, the last line has been executed and now it is waiting for 30 seconds. As you can see the time counter here, it is progressing, but the 30 seconds should be exhausted in order to go with the second iteration. So we will just run this for one time and then we will continue with the next topic and next option. Now you can also observe this here that it is not about the total 30 seconds of the execution. Right at the moment when the iteration ends from there the 30 seconds will be counted and then continue ahead. So right now we are running the iteration number 2 and again it is holding for 30 seconds to go with the third iteration. And second iteration was executed with Portland and London as the values. And uh, we should now have the third iteration. So this is what you basically uh, refer to pacing uh, as an interval between the iterations. All right, here we go. And this is our third iteration. And that's it. So for the third iteration, as, as, as it is the last iteration, it will never prompt us for waiting or delay. And we are done with this. So let's come to the runtime settings. Now this is what your pacing is utilized for. The next option is log. The log basically is a section where you define that what kind of logs must be populated in the output pane of the replay. And that's where we can define that we are looking forward to what all options. For example, first of all, you can enable or disable the logging of the events which you basically capture. But by default, it will be enabled. And if you disable, you generally don't get what you need to have. Then you can define that log options, send messages always or when the log error occurs and limit cache to KBs or whatever number of KBs you can define as a threshold to raise a particular information message. Now if I come to the errors here, I do have information messages and we are talking about this send message here. So we have the messages for every single activity which is happening which is just similar to uh, the replay log what you get in your output tab and you have the notifications here from each and every execution. So that's where we have enabled it and for always because I just want to capture each and every event but sometime it consumes a lot of information and data can degrade your execution time and other things so you just limit it to certain threshold. Second is of course uh, detail level how detailed do you want it for example standard logs or stand, uh, exp extended logs. The standard logs are what we are seeing right now in the replay log. You do have the provision to see all the information, but do you see that uh, I'm using parameters, but those are not displayed in my replay log. 
I don't have any step to capture those that what data was used. So that's where extended lock can be useful. For example, parameter substitution. At any point of time when the sub parameters are used, that step will also be populated in the replay log. And uh, we have data returned by the server. We have advanced traces, which logs all the user messages and function call, which is completely end to end. And this can impact your execution time and being more, uh, you know, performance limited. So just use this option when you really need the detailed analysis to be done. So let's use this parameter substitution and uh, use this particular option to be executed with our execution this time. So click on save and I'm just going to disable the pacing because uh, that's going to take a lot of time for our uh, execution and let's uh, run the script. And this time we are going to notice if the parameters are logged in my log or not. So again, uh, the execution will begin from the beginning and we are in the runtime settings. So Denver, Paris, Portland, London and uh, London, Zurich. So now the execution has completed. Let's come to the output pane and see that there is a notification added now which is in the blue in color that for the fly from three, we use this value from the table. And this is what happened for this again. So there is a notification which is saying that which column, which row value was used for the execution. And here you can find in details that which value was actually feared in for this parameter when it comes to line number 26. Okay. So that's where you can actually find out all the information about the correlation parameter as well and substitution of this value, which was this and so on. So every single iteration, you'll have these blue traces for the extended log, and you can definitely have all the information about the parameters right in your log itself, because during the runtime, it's difficult and it's so fast that you may not monitor the runtime data. Let's talk about the last thing what we are looking forward to in our tutorial today is the think time. The think time basically determines the time taken by the user when you were recording the script. For example, if I come to my action or every action, you do have some think time provided here. Now, this is the time taken by the user while recording uh, of the particular script and how long did the user take in order to click on the next button. So the think time basically literally explains that the user thought for five seconds before it could hit the next option. So just where we find this. Similarly, if I go to user init, I would have a think time of this that is six seconds. And similarly for V user end, I have four seconds. So, you know, generating the think time uh, is again something which is by default. You can control it. But how do you want to replicate it is what my observation is. So if I come back to the runtime settings, I have a few options like, for example, ignore the think time. That means I'll just ignore and system will co coordinate with the availability of the function and just perform as soon as the object is available on the screen. Whereas the second one is replay the thing time as recorded. For example, if I just want to simulate a real time behavior of the user, that means for clicking on login who took 10 seconds, selecting a flight he took 15 seconds, I just want to simulate the same thing. Then I go with replay the thing time as recorded. Sometime I want to extend it further. And that's where I use the third option that is multiply recorded think time by one time, two time, three time. One time is same, but two times will multiply it by two. So wherever it is four, it will become eight. If wherever it is six, it will become 12 seconds and so on. Okay. So it will just multiply the recorded think time by that many number of times what you have selected. Use random percentage of recorded think time. That means you can define the percentages here and the system will automatically pick up anything between them like 50% to 150% or 100% to 200% by default. So this is randomizing it and then limit think time to certain threshold. So if you want to limit that, it should not be more than 10 seconds, then you can just say, and it is a checkbox. This can be used with any of these settings. Okay. So let's try with multiplying this uh, by two and limiting it to the 10 seconds. That means it should not go beyond that. For example, if I come to my user in it, I see the threshold or the think time is six seconds. So multiplying it by two will go to 12 seconds, but I just want it to limit it to 10 seconds only. So let's save this and try running this with the multiplied think time. So replay my script. And now you would see that it will be holding on on certain function for some time to get started. Can you see that now init is executed and it is waiting for the uh, action to get executed because it has been multiplied. So LR think time 10. Can you see LR think time 10 seconds recorded think time is five. So it's thinking like a user for some time before it can clicks on the next one. And 
The same continues for all the three iterations. So we do have you know three iterations of this test. So it will take a few seconds to complete this execution with the extended log, and uh, it will showcase all the information what we need uh, for the each execution. And it will also, in fact, report that the think time was utilized as uh, defined by you. As it is logging, you can see that the logging of the information is happening here. That you declared me to wait for 10 seconds, then I'm waiting for the as a user 10 seconds utilization and so on. So that's where uh, the LR think time 10 seconds will be uh, utilized, and it will be logged in your uh, the replay log as well. And uh, it will also prompt you with the real think time, which was in the script. So I hope you got a very good clarity on the runtime settings here, making use of. Uh, the run logic, pacing, log, and think time. Of course, there are a lot many other things which you can actually explore and let me know by commenting below that what are the other options which you like me to explore about. But of course, this would be enough for anybody to get started. And we want to keep the name of the channel that is testing in nutshell without elaborating like a full detailed course, which would be maybe more than 40 to 30 hours of time. So that's all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, Keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.